We hope you enjoy this podcast. With over 100 books under his belt, Bill Vincent is a true master of the written word. His works are a treasure trove of knowledge and inspiration, available at all major bookstores and online platforms. So, don't miss out on the opportunity to expand your mind and be entertained. Pick up a book by Bill Vincent today. Aren't you excited? Hallelujah. God has got some plans for us. I really believe that. Recently, my wife and I and uh, Joseph went and spent some time in a vehicle together. Hallelujah. We got to go get a little taste of revival. And it never fails every time we go anywhere. Praise God. We see a lot of things, don't we? A lot of junk. Praise God. A lot of things that just aren't of God in the church. And tonight I really felt by the Spirit of God, I'm going to preach right now. Hallelujah. We're not waiting. And uh, sometimes we've got to change things up. But God t- told me this morning, he said, be no more babes. It's very interesting that we have a certain child that's going to be two tomorrow. Can you believe two years? Hallelujah. And in the midst of her, I have seen a lot of things and got a lot of revelation. And I really believe tonight that God is going to speak about some things, and I really believe that he wants to do some things in our life. You know, just because God says he's going to do something doesn't mean he just does it. Somebody needs to understand what I just said. In fact, whether you like it or not, there's been people in this There's been people in this room in the past that has tried to get God, God's word not to be fulfilled in their life. In other words, they've tried to almost cause the word not to be fulfilled. To try to come against it. And I really believe tonight that you don't realize that you do something like that. You almost want God to fail in your life. You say, why? Because it's a baby thing. It's a child thing. Hallelujah. How many have ever given a child something and once they get it, that's not what they want anymore? The same thing goes with a Christian baby. Sometimes we get to the place where we're like, God, I want this, I want this, I want this, and then when you start to get it, you start to whine about it. And some of you are going to say, well, this is about me, this is about me, this is about me. Let me go ahead and make you all feel better. It's about every one of us. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. But God took me to a scripture and he said, 1 Corinthians chapter 3, verse 2. I have fed you with milk and not with meat. For hitherto you were not able to bear it. Neither yet now are you able. You know, we've received some of the most powerful things. And I'm not saying that because I preach. But we have received some stuff here. We've received some stuff in Revival Ways of Glory. Over the past several years, God has given us some substantial meat that has been very impressive for us to receive. I know it's for me. I don't know about you, but it's for me. I'm like, man, God really does feed us well. But God gave me the scripture, and I said, well, God, you know, most of the people that's going to be there is going to be people that's going to, that's always there. And he said, yes, this sermon's for Every one of them. Come on. He, when he gives you, uh, he's saying, you're not able to bear the meat. You know why a child's not able to bear meat? Because they're going to choke on it. Come on. They're going to throw it back up. If you give somebody something that they can't take yet, as it, you can't give a baby without teeth a piece of steak. You can barely give a baby with teeth a piece of steak unless it's all chopped up. And I'm telling you, we are the same way. Whether we like it or not, we choke on what God's trying to give us. And I'm telling you, there's been times that God has really gave us things straight from the throne of God, deal with our hearts, and we have responded by picking that same thing up again and again and again and again. 
Is there an echo in here? But 1 Corinthians, even chapter 3, uh, uh, begins to talk about some more things. A few verses, and I, I, I really believe the subject today is be no more babes. Talking about baby Christians. Now, don't get me wrong. We all have grace. We all have that experience. And I believe children have a special grace to where they are allowed things that we're not allowed. Some of you have only been with the ministry for three or four years. Some of you have been ministry late, le less than that. But anyone who's been part of this ministry should know by now, we're not messing around. And we're not going to mess around. Imagine a tragedy of an adult who is a grown man or a grown woman who be behaves like a baby. How many have ever seen this? It's actually a reality. But let's go a step farther. Baby Christians or a baby can be a person that is a little person who utterly depends upon somebody else. That's what a baby is. They depend on someone else. Now, let me go a step farther. It is a person who is amused and oftentimes by rubbish. Babies can be amused by things that are just terrible. And it is a person who is assumed oftentimes, I'm telling you, you can, you can even give a box with a beautiful toy in the box to a baby, and the baby will enjoy the box more than the toy. Many times I believe God gives us things, gives us things, and give us, gives us things and gives us things. And we enjoy the box more than the, the toy, more than the gifts that he gives us. You say, oh, this is for me? A baby seems to put everything in its mouth that it finds lying on the ground. You drop a fry, and that baby will pick it up just like a little dog and shove it right in their mouth. They'll carry around a Pop-Tart for an hour, and when they're sick of holding that thing, they'll just toss it on the ground. If you don't pick that thing up right away, guess what? They'll pick that thing up later and just shove it right back in their mouth. You say, oh, this doesn't have anything to do with me. As little babes... Even babies begin to get older. Even little bitty babies learn how to throw a tantrum when they don't get their way. How many have ever seen a little baby can throw a tantrum? Anybody ever see a baby throw a tantrum if they don't get their way? And you got to know what they want. You got to know what they want. And guess what? 30 seconds later, it's going to change, but you've got to give them what they want sometimes. When we look at the figure or metaphor that I'm releasing, the illustration, and even Paul released an analogy that I really believe is most powerful. He gives us this clarity that we see he's talking about people who was always dependent upon someone else, who never learned to have spiritual independence or growth individually. Let me tell you something. There's going to come in last days, and you're not going to have pastor so-and-so. You're not going to have brother so-and-so. You're not going to be able to text somebody. You're not going to be able to call somebody. You're going to have to be depend 100% on the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. Now, don't get me wrong, I'm all in favor that we all need to go through some time of counsel and with times of deliverance. But we've had services where if you open your heart, if you say, God, I really want it, you can be delivered right here in the service. Over and over and over again. Sometimes you don't even have to be here. And you can still get set free. You know what we did last week? We stirred up a lot of junk. Some people didn't know how messed up they were until last week. 
Even if you prayed it without your whole heart, you can pray and get things stirred up in your life. See, babies often get to such a place that they care about things that don't matter. See, you'll show them a toilet and you'll say, okay, this is what you use when you go potty. And they'll see that rubber baby toilet seat and they'll be carrying it around on top of their head an hour later. And they're amused by it. You know why? Because they're still not matured. I don't see most of us walking around with a toilet seat on our head thinking it's funny. Come on. Christians within the church are prone to tantrums. You say, oh, I never throw a fit. I'm talking about if you get upset because the pastor didn't wave at you on Sunday morning, you've got a problem. I used to have people quit the church and tell me they quit because I didn't say good morning one Sunday morning. Or somebody comes back after being gone for three months or six months or a year, and because I don't give them special attention, I've had people leave. That's what a baby is like. If you can imagine what an adult would be like, I want you to imagine the Corinthian Christians who were like in the days of Paul. Imagine the tragedy of an adult or a grown man that behaves like a baby. Paul decides when they're going to have church, how they're going to do it, and they just start throwing fits. See, what you don't realize is there is a very powerful message in the days of Paul in the Corinthian church because he was dealing with a church just like today. They got saved, they got born again, but after a while they were supposed to stop the milk. Man that has never developed or a man that has never grown spiritually is a baby. Babies are people who never grow. A Christian that has at his disposal all the power and riches of God fails willingly to grow. That's what a baby is. He is still a babe in Christ if they fail to grow. I don't know about you, but your first year of salvation compared to your tenth year of salvation should be a little different. Your fifth year should be different than your first I know 20-year-old Christians who are 20-year-old sinners. I'm telling you, and there is such a thing as undeveloped, immature Christians. And most of them have ministry attached to their name. I have a full-time ministry. Well, praise God, then you should act different. Paul speaks about these people in verse 1. He says, brethren. I want you to remember that word, brethren. He looks upon them as believer brothers. I believe that's staggering to me. I believe that really shocks me that he's still referring to them as as brothers. By the end of chapter 2, the people are natural. These brethren now are natural. In other words, they're no more just brethren. You're not even uh, uh, saved 
They're, they're just living like Christians, so they're not saved. They're living like Christians, acting like Christians, but they're not even saved by the end of the next chapter. I want you to think about that. It didn't say they didn't go to church. He says that they are babes in Christ. Positionally, they are in Christ, and he calls them brothers. But then, they are real Christians, yet they've never developed. See, that's the difference there. He begins to refer to them, okay, you're in Christ, you're born again, welcome to the family. But then after a while, you're not developed now. See, we've got to grow. We have to grow. Babies are coming. Babies are coming. What do you think we're going to give birth to? A harvest, supernatural harvest is going to come across the world. And if we're still sucking the bottle in the binky, how are we going to serve? Aren't you excited? Preach it. I believe that he calls them brothers because he wants as he did in chapter 1, to show them affection. I believe calling a brother a brother, a sister a sister in the Lord is really an affection. To show them the grace before he comes with the hard rebuke that comes later. And we must not miss the the importance and significance of the magnitude of this illustration. In verse 1, I could not speak unto you as unto spiritual, but as unto carnal, even as unto babes in Christ. Now I want you to note this. Paul, I believe, is speaking about, listen, the first he was speaking to the, with the Corinthians church, he was speaking when he came to them and he led them to Christ. But then they were babes in Christ. They were infants. Now he calls them carnal. You know why? Because they never matured. And I'm telling you something. The enemy is trying to get us to be dependent so much to where we become more carnal. I understand people needing delivered. I understand going to a service that's prophetic to get some. I understand really needing to be set free of things from time to time and really being bound with something from time to time. But if we're not going straight to the throne of God first, if we're not being in a relationship with him first, guess what? There's going to be problems, man. There's going to be babes. That's what's going on. When you just... Be, go bypass God, you're still going to be a babe in the midst of it. I'm not talking about just the basic accountability. There's a truth in that. But I'm talking about we can almost always need it. Some of you remember contacting us, saying, I need this, I need that, and we cut you off like cold turkey. You know Why? Because you were, you were not seeking him anymore about it. You just call us up think we're on a hook waiting for you. God is good. God is great. He has delivered us out of much. But if we could come here every week and open our heart and lay on our face and say, God, I need God. I need God to move in my life. I need God to touch my life. We could have been delivered seven times over. There's a hundred times, I bet you, I've laid hands on some of us in this place, and you have rejected it every time. I've seen people, some of you, you have gone to Nathan Morris, he's prayed for you, and you rejected what he did on you. I've seen it in the spirit. You were like stone cold clay. You know what that is? That means you're satisfied with what you've got. See, God's calling across this nation babies. He's calling the nation babies. You, want, you don't want to know why? Because nobody's growing. We can hear the same old, same old every week and nobody grows. That's babies. That's satisfied. That's a baby preaching to babies. Nobody's growing. That's a, that's a pathetic thing. 
Now, the word carnal is simply means fleshly. See, when you were a baby, we're all fleshly. And it means worldly. The opposite to spiritual, to be rooted down and to have your tent pegs into the world to be a fleshly Christian. This is what God calls baby Christians, fleshly Christians. You say, well, God doesn't minister to us like that. I want you to understand, we have received some of the greatest things in our life, and yet we have not changed. I don't know about you, but I'm not satisfied till we get revival back. As far as me and my house, if we got to kick you all out to have revival, we will. No joke intended. I know some of you were waiting on my punchline. When these Corinthians were first converted, like many people and some of us here, we don't realize... And really, we don't understand everything that it takes to, that's been placed upon our life. When you're first saved, man, it's easy. How many know it's easy when you first get saved? You got grace upon grace upon grace upon grace. Some people flip their cigarette butts at the door, walk into a service and raise their hands up toward heaven. Hallelujah, kumbaya. Let's all go to dinner after but if that doesn't change down the road, now you're fleshly. Now you're carnal. I hope you're excited. Even when you get converted, although you don't know everything, there's still baggage. How many found that you had baggage after you got saved? Some of you say, well, I still got it. Baggage department it's not a compartment that's a base that's a little hole to shove your baggage i got a department it's a whole store come on some of you got a store you say oh i don't have baggage okay i bet you if i say 20 words to you i could push your buttons some of you, all I'd have to say is something about your kids, or I'd have to say something to call you stupid, call you ignorant, call, just push on your buttons, say you can't drive. Come on, say you drive too fast, say you drive too slow. Come on, I could push your buttons. And you will manifest. Isn't that right? Now, don't get me wrong, I got some of my own, I've got buttons. And they know how to push them. Amen. Some of you use your Snapchat as your venting. All oh, these people. I'm not looking at the Snapchats. I just saw it in the spirit. Why are you always looking down one row? Hallelujah. Sometimes we get to a place we will get so upset about something and we think it's them. You know what that is? They started it. That's a child. That's a baby. I expect that from that little one. But none of the others. Aren't you excited? You don't let go of everything that you had in the world just when you get saved. It takes a little time. Come on, I got delivered of drugs and alcohol. Boom. But how many know God, he, found, he finds some new stuff to deal with. It's like, well, praise God. My custom vocabulary went from 1,000 a day probably to 300, and I thought I was saved. Come on, some, nobody here. Okay, let's talk about that 
slang cuss words that God was dealing with. How short are you a day? Here, let, let's, here's what God said to do tonight. Since we're acting like babies, every time you say a slang cuss word that God was dealing with just a matter of weeks ago, you need to write down the number that you said it. And by the end of the day, you're going to find out how many times you said this, this slang cuss words. Some of you better keep a notebook close. Some of you are holier than thou. Some of you just think you are. Because you don't have a problem with that, but we have problems somewhere else. Aren't you excited? I think anybody with children gets those slang cuss words. You know, you know what they mean, but you say the other one. I used to know somebody, they always say, God dang it. I said, don't take God's name in vain. They said, I said, God. I said, you don't think he knew? Yeah. Come on. I wouldn't have said that out loud unless God gave me permission to say it. Yeah. Just that time, just so you know. I hope that was offensive. But they are choosing not to grow as believers, and they are choosing not to take the meat of God's word, but to still feed on milk. See, some of us have been getting, get, we've got so much meat given to us that we've not received it because we just want milk. Here's what God said to me. He said, here's what he said to me, and I want you to hear this, and I want you to hear it right between the eyes. He said, why does everyone buy a CD every week and skim through it like skim milk? They didn't receive it 100% the first time, so they buy a CD to receive it 100% less the second time. That's what God said. He said, why do they skim through it like skim milk? I'm not trying to hit our CD sales here and try to tell you not to buy one if you're just going to skim through it, but I am going to say this. You want to really get that stuff in you sometimes? Write down some stuff as you're, as you're listening. To it. Lay that stuff out. My wife's been listening to me all week, and I'm sick of me. <laughs> I'm sick of my, my voice. I could have just played a CD tonight. Some of those services, you need to hear again. You probably got the CD at home. Write them down. Listen to them. Study out a little bit. Why? Because God speaks some profound things to us. Aren't you excited? Some Christians get saved and they think initially that they're going to live just as they lived before just not in the same way. How many thought that? I'm going to live just like I did before. I'm going to live a lie. That's really what they just said. I'm going to live just like I did before and go to church. I've told you about people, when I was in the world, they'd always get up as Sunday morning, no matter how crashed and passed out and, and drug still laying all over the house, and they would wake up that morning and just say, let's go to Sunday school. And I was too convicted. I'm like, no. I said, there is no way I'm stepping into a church. They say, oh, it's just a Methodist, something like that. I'm like, so? I had too much fear of God to even rise up on that Sunday morning. Some of those people were working in the Sunday school. That is worse than anything I've ever seen in the church. But I'm telling you, some of us don't realize how far off we are. I want the big time ministry. I want to lay hands on people. Well, guess what? God doesn't want you to sometimes. When, when Paul first ministered to those believers at the Corinth church, he realized there was a process of sanctification. 
had only started, and there was a long road ahead of them. And I want you to understand, he changed his tone. If you really look at the scripture, as the years went by, his tone changed the way that he preached to them. At first it was like, welcome to the kingdom, hallelujah. Then I began to draw to your carnal. Your fleshly. Then it got a little deeper. You're just babies. You're not doing anything. You're sinners. It's the same church. No maturity. I want you to understand. Someone said this week, might even been today. You know how blessed we are. You can drive three hours, sometimes six hours, any direction on a continuous basis and not find what we've had in this place. And I'm not saying that because of me because I wouldn't have any of it if it wasn't for God. But I'm telling you, we are blessed because there's a bunch of pathetic, fake Christians out there, churches that are saying they have it when they have nothing. People do, going nowhere, people that are prophetic that are really pathetic. And I want you to understand that we are so blessed to have the privilege that we have in this place, but yet we still are sucking the binky. Whether you like it or not, that, that's all of us. Sometime in, the, in our midst, we are just pacifiers. In verse 2, I have fed you with milk, not with meat, for hitherto you were not able to bear it. Think about that. So when he first came to them, they were converted, and he realized that they would never be right right then. They would not be fully saved. They would not be fully delivered. He was very soft with them. But then he, he knew that they couldn't take the meat of God's word that he would try to feed them, not solids. See, think of a baby. A baby cannot receive solid food. And like a baby, a baby would right away choke on any solid food. And they were not ready for anything else. And there's a lesson in that right away because... They are, there are many people that I see coming out of the church today that get into to the depths of prophecy, it's prophetic in the things of Scripture, and they have not learned the basics of Jesus, come into my life, forgive me of my sin, repenting daily, taking up their cross daily. And they're learning end times. They're learning about the end time uh, harvest. And, and they're learning, learning about all that's going to happen, tribulation, post-trip, mid-trip, whatever. They are learning about all the depths of things that they're really just choking on. You know why? Because they're still babies. You can't feed a baby. The same thing. Some people are backslidden. And they're receiving meat. Sometimes that's like eating Chinese food. It goes right through you. Come on, some of you have that experience. It is important to realize that when you're first converted, you will never understand everything, and there's a lot of growing in the process. But let me tell you something. Even these children right here, they are at a different level because God's looking at them. The more you receive, the more that's required of you. And I want you to understand, God's not going to just look at these guys as little babies.
These Corinthians, like all people converted, were not ready for anything else and was fully understandable at the time of salvation. See, this is what it's like. Some Christians today still haven't re really received and understood the ABCs of Christianity. You say, what's the ABCs? I'm talking about the elementary ways of Christ. If we haven't even understood the basics of Christ, how in the world are we going to walk in deliverance? How are we going to walk in miracles? How are we going to do what we do? Some people try to put a tag on them, I'm a minister, before they're even... Off the binky. They still, still weren't ready. And the apostle Paul said this. To receive the meat of the word. I want you to understand something. I, I'm paraphrasing. I want you to understand. I'm paraphrasing this part. I don't care what way you look at this. This is abnormal the way you are. That was my paraphrase. The church had received for years and never changed. You know why some churches just continue to grow? It's because it's, it's like a pulpit with nipples. If I could... Blow up a bunch of doctor's medical gloves and just stick them on this pole right here, sticking out like a bunch of nipples. I just line up this whole thing and have them puffed up because that's what a lot of the church is coming to feed on. Come on, some of you can see that. You say, oh, I don't need that, brother. Well, if you choke on the meat at all, if you choke on the, even the counsel at all, if you choke on anything that I give you at all, you're wanting that more right now. You say, well, then what I got to do to change? It's you to him. That's what changes a person. Aren't you excited? It's just like a little child that's never matured, never grown up. I have just saw on a thing the other day, a 12-year-old boy sucking on his mama. 12. She's 12, wherever she's at. There she, 12. That's disgusting. That's supposed to help? Oh, it's okay. I mean, come out. It's not, a, it's not a time that you want to even get rid of your slang cuss words. You're like, what the? Mm, 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 mm. There should be something on the edge. There should be some kind of kin on the end of my words. Think about that. That's what Christians look like today. They come in. Doesn't that sound terrible? Yeah. I wish, in fact, I wish that would, God would just expose babies in the church. Yeah. In the spirit, everybody would be seen sucking on a bottle. I think it looks abnormal for some of these almost teenagers and teenagers to be sucking on those pops that change your mouth color and they stick it in their mouth they go... They walk around with them sticking out of their face. And they're called pacifiers. That's good. That come out. And I want you to understand, babies in, in God are wanting to be babies. Why? Because they're voluntarily not changing. 
They choose not to grow. They are choosing not to take meat of God's word. And they are still feeding on milk. It's abnormal. It's unnatural. And I want you to know it's a lack of natural development. There's something internal of a 12-year-old boy that's not going to be developed right if he's still feeding on mama. Because the body, even God made the body to actually be able to produce that stuff as long as it's still being primed. Talk about taking it a whole other step farther. So every time a child cries, you just shove them under. No, you go to your room. Get away from me. Some of you need to get this. That's how foolish it looks for a baby in, Christ, in a Christian. I think I saw that little thing, just that little five-second thing, ten-second, however long it was, just for this sermon. I mean, if they can walk and talk, they don't need to go under No kidding. And Paul was distinguishing that there are two different types of Christians in chapter 2. And he talked about a spiritual man and a natural man. The natural man is unconverted and does not perceive or discern spiritual things. See, th those things are spiritually discerned. A natural man cannot receive the things of God because they are spiritually discerned. He wasn't talking to sinners. He was talking to a church. Most of, the, most of the stuff that Paul said harshly in the, to, in the Word of God was to churches. Now, wonderful. See, it's foolish to those who are natural, it's foolish to babies. Come on, when is the 12-year-old boy going to be able to have a piece of steak? He hasn't matured. He hasn't grown. He's not going to be able to just, oh, okay. What's he do at school? And then chapter 3, he's not talking about the saved or unsaved, but he's talking about spiritual Christians opposed to carnal Christians. He says that not only are there two camps in humanity between those who are saved and lost, but there's two camps within Christians, those that are carnal and those that are spiritual. See, I want you to understand something. God said, I'm separating the sheep from the goats. The goats aren't just people who are bucket against the things of God. They're also goats, at the, those that are babies. You can buck against the things of God and spew out the meat, choke up the meat, and not receive the meat of God's word. And you are going to be right there with the goats. If we don't grow now, how are we going to grow when the end time comes? I want you to hear this, and I want you to hear this as sharp as I mean it. If you were at the end of the world and people were dying because they were Christians, they were being martyred for the things of God, and you had you and your family, and you were not able to get food or drink unless you received the mark of the beast, unless you are in God and receive it supernaturally, I want you to understand, what are you going to do? Are you going to say, oh, if I could just find Bill and Tabitha, oh, if I could just get on the web and, and, and watch this person or watch this person? No, you're going to have to rise up in your own self and know that God is with you. Amen. 
in every transformation in the Word of God where Jesus was with the disciples. At first, when Jesus left, when Elijah left, come on, all the different ones, when they left, when even Paul left and Timothy was left, all the ones that were left, praise God, that, that were here, at first it took them a moment. It took them a moment in time to know whether or not they had their own anointing. But they all had to rise up in their hour. When Jesus left, the disciples were lost for a while until he showed them that he was resurrected. Elisha took on the mantle of Elijah and went forth and did everything that Elijah did. Even Timothy would have never rose up if he didn't receive the solid truth. As a young man. It's not that you're spiritual and then you stay spiritual for the rest of your life. How many know that? How many have a spiritual day and have a carnal day? Anybody here? Sometimes you have one day that's spiritual, the next day is carnal. You know why? Because that's where you need repentance. Every Sunday morning in most churches, when the saints come dragging in, oh, when the saints come dragging in. You know why? Because they had a more carnal week. You know what? Real revival that God's about to break out right here in Raymond, Illinois is going to be one of the most powerful revivals. And those that are leading and those that are a team of what God's doing in this place are going to be so charged when they walk in on, on Friday night, on Saturday night, whenever we come together. And they're going to be so charged with the glory of God that they're not going to be dragging in. They're going to have a spiritual week. They're going to have a spiritual week that's going to be rising up in maturity, saying me and my house are serving the word of the Lord, standing on the word of God and we're not going down it doesn't mean you won't have some loss it doesn't mean you won't have some carnal but you and I together need to have more spiritual in our week See, Paul called Christians men of the flesh. They're Christians, but they're still men of the flesh. I think it's a little shocking. We have to go to somewhere and somebody like Nathan to put us all in our place. A lot of what he says, I've either already said or God said some way or another to us. But sometimes we don't receive it till he says it. If you're a young believer, and I want you to understand there are a couple here that are young believers. The Bible does not expect young Christians to be spiritual instantaneously. But we ha what we have as Christian believers, after that we've been converted and been feeding upon milk for a while, I want you to know that it's time to move forward. It's time to move beyond the milk. I don't know about you, but imagine some of us men. I know the women probably could feed on stuff that isn't meat. And be happy about it. Just something about women sometimes. They, they, they can skip a cheeseburger now and then and not have a problem with it. And sometimes I feel like a carnivore. Come on, I need some meat. And some of us, we get to a place to where we require it so much that we want it bad. See, we should be that way in the Word of God. Take the heart. Take the meat of what God has. Take what He has and take it all. And want more. 
and not buck against it, not whine about it. Just say, yeah, that's for me. I know it hurts, but it's good. It's good for my soul. It's good for my family, and I don't care. There's one author. He has sold 8 million copies of his graced malarkey book. Might as well have nipples on it. Everybody loves it. Why? Because it gives them a pacifier. It gives them another nipple. It gives them another way to live. Oh, I don't have to receive me. I don't ever have to grow. I can just sit on my butt and just go to church and live the way I want to live. Smoke, do this, do drugs, and go to heaven. Guess what? That's a lie. How many of 8 million sales are going to go to hell if they believe that book? I was offered to publish that book. I told him I'd deny, I, I, I sent him a nice little denial letter. And they came back and said, this book will sell many copies, and your portion of the royalties will be astronomical. They estimated hundreds of thousands. It sold eight million. And, you know, the enemy every once in a while says, you know where you guys would be right now if you had that book? I said, yeah, we'd be selling our souls for a dollar. Yeah. We'd be going right to the pit of hell. I tell you what, I would rather sell a thousand books that preach the truth that only sells a thousand here and a thousand there than to do one book who sells millions that has a bunch of malarkey in it. It's garbage. Hmm. Books with nipples. And before I know it, I'm going to have a book that's got a big cow thing on it. Hallelujah. People open it up, it'd be like one of those pop-up books. Is this what you want? If you don't, push those nipples down and turn to page three. Come on. The meat's beyond the milk. Hallelujah. No, it probably could. Right next to the pickles and Lunchables. It doesn't take as long for some of us to think for us to get mature. Most of us only get mature as fast as we want to get mature. There's things this little girl's going to do that's going to make these guys seem immature. You say, why? She's too young. There's no way. Because she's going to mature faster just because of the household she was born into. Sometimes you get born. How many know some people are born into a milk church? And guess what? They, they'll come here and they'll be like, I've been saved 20 years. Looking for a nipple. Like you're in the wrong house. If you want some milk, see some of the ladies because you're not getting it from me. That sounded horrible, didn't it? You know the background sometimes of Christians going and growing and growing, and Paul led them to Christ. But I want you to understand, now he's writing a letter, uh, and, and there are only three to five years biblically that has passed in those first several chapters. Only three to five years maximum had passed by the time he's preaching to them, calling them practically, practically sinners. You say, well, I don't have to grow that fast. I, I'm a new Christian for 10 years. Then Jesus, what about Jesus? His ministry was on fire for three and a half years. 
some of us realize our growth can be so stunted by our own self. You know why some people aren't rising up in the days of God? Because they don't want to. This little baby right here is going to pass many of us in this room up if we don't start getting up. Sometimes I'll say to the girls, sometimes I'll say it, and I mean it too. She's worshiping better than you do. And some of them say, I know. They don't, they're like, yeah, I agree. And I want you to understand that sometimes these children have been in enough meetings to have a desire and hunger for it. we got to note that, three to five years, yet Paul is expecting the natural spiritual growth in these believers. In fact, he thinks that at this stage, they should be spiritual, not carnal. Three to five years. Some of you say, oh, yeah, that, well, that's back in the Bible days. If anything, this should make us feel worse. Because back in the Bible days, they lived to be hundreds of years old. That had to hurt a bit. Well, of course, he's supposed to receive. He's been saved for five years. I've only been saved for two. Well, she's older. She should be more mature. Aren't you excited? Yet they're still babes. Do you know what he's saying? You remain babes too long. That's what he's saying. You have stayed babies too long. I saw one time, I saw it by the Spirit, and I wonder what it meant. Uh, a man of God I used to watch on video all the time until he started getting into his flesh more than he's into spirit. And I'd watch him preach the word of God. Man, he can preach. He can write. He can preach. He can release a powerful message. And he was preaching. And I saw by the Spirit every person in the crowd, like two pays flying up in the air. And I said, God, what's that? What's going on? I know nobody, not everybody has two pays because it was men and women. It was everybody. And their hair was flying up as he was preaching the word of God. And I saw it by the Spirit of God. And I said, God, what does it mean? He said this. He said, it's going right over their heads. Because they want the milk. Revival's been in that church. Revival's been part of that church. Not long ago. Is your toupee flying up right now? Or do you want to get rid of the nipple? Let me tell you something. You try to go up to get any milk from Tabitha, and I guarantee you, you're not going to come back again. Not going to happen a second time. You come up once, it will be the last time. <laughs> See, some of you need to realize how ignorant that sounds. I mean, that sounds ridiculous. You know a lot of pastors' wives, that's the only thing they give. My wife don't have any milk in her, man. She's going to give you some meat. It might come with a left hook, an uppercut, or a knee in that side, but it's going to come meat. That's all she gives me, too. Come on, this is challenging. This is really challenging. This is challenging. God knew who was going to be here tonight. When you think about it, this is why the Lord Jesus shed his blood upon Calvary. He shed his blood for you and me not to have a nipple. Think about Jesus. He gets these guys, these sinners to follow him. He's like, follow me. Drop what you're doing and follow me. They just drop everything and follow him. And with a matter of a year, he's already saying, you of little faith. 
In other words, what's your problem? You have seen this, you've seen that, and you still want your binky. He wasn't nice. How many times do you think the disciples went up to him during the week and said, uh, I'm, I'm still having a problem? Every time they came to him, he went after them. Some of you think, read, really read the relationship between the disciples and Jesus. It wasn't pretty. I'm serious. You know, it's amazing when we see a young man or a woman after three years of conversion to begin to grow in the Spirit. It's amazing to see how fast a young person in the Lord can grow in the Spirit. I have seen people get saved, and three years later, they're preaching, they're prophesying, they're laying hands on people, they believe what they're doing, and they're standing on the Word of God. Makes some of us elders think, oh my goodness. See, the young people, the sky is the limit. Some of these people in this room, the 12 and 13-year-olds especially, they're going to go places if they just say, yes. Instead of saying, I want to go to a friend's house on Friday night and Saturday night, they're going to say, yes, I want to go to church. I want to receive some meat. Not at the drive through afterwards. See, that's normal. That's natural for us to desire the things of God. I used to leave services and say, man, that was a good kick in the teeth. How many have ever been in a service like that? Some of you say, right now. But I'd go to services and be like, man, they just went, pow. Hallelujah. Nailed me. And I've known some Christians, they get saved, and one year later, let's rephrase that. A few months later, they're saying, I'm going to the nations. I'm going to pray for people. I'm going to go to Africa. I'm going to go to Israel. I'm going to go to, they come back with 50 heads. You know, sometimes a baby will try to do more than they can do. Babies have a way of desiring something up high. And you know what they do? They begin to try to get there. If they can't get you to get up to get it, finally they're like, okay, how am I going to get on top of this thing? Sometimes you'll catch a baby halfway up a couch, going on standing on the back of it. I caught somebody this week sitting on the back of the couch, just hanging off the back of it, looking out the window. And they wonder why I freaked out. Because you're a baby. Sitting backwards on the couch, looking out the window. Not even two years old. Just hanging out, legs crossed. I'm like, you better get down. And then they cry, wondering why. Then tries to go right back where they just went. That's a baby. But trust me, they didn't go back. You got to understand sometimes we're just like babies. Continue to do something we're not supposed to do. Continue to pick up the same thing over and over and stick it in our mouth. 
I'm going to land that what a baby is. Just continue to pick it up and just shove something in your mouth just because you want it in your mouth. Just continue to pick up something and shove it in your mouth and continue to stick things in your mouth. Continue to do it. Why? Because that's a baby. That's an infant. How long since you first fed on the milk? We're almost done. Are you normal in the sight of God? Paul is saying that we all ought to have an insatiable passion to grow and not to wait for another to grow and seek God. Some people always are waiting. We wait for others to rise up before we'll ever go. You know what I say? Catch us if you can. It's time to rise up and stop waiting for each other. The church is overstuffed with big babies. You know what you get when you wind up a church? Like the jack in the box? You don't get pop goes the weasel. You get crying. That's the church. Come on, it's even funny to a baby. Sometimes we just wind up and we all cry about what, where we are. And guess what? You can change where you are. You say, oh, I can't change. I don't have any money. I'm broke. I don't have this. I don't have that. I don't want nobody. There's two, there's two questions that every pastor should, should, or two comments a pastor should say to every believer. Come out or get out. You say, oh, that's, that's horrible. Let's rephrase that. Jesus said, oh, you of little faith. How have you not learned after you've seen? Paul said, how do you guys still need milk all these years later? They weren't any nicer, so why should we be? In Jesus, who we're supposed to be like? All right. You know what? Sometimes God will give you a promise saying, I'm going to do this, I'm going to do this in your life, and I'm going to do this. And some of you have those things that he said, and they've never happened. And because of some of the decisions you make, they're never going to happen. But you say, why do, th- does he say those things? Because someday you're going to be standing before God. He's going to say, you're going to say, oh, you never did this, you never did that. As he's judging you, and instead of you sa- being able to really say anything, he's going to say, listen. I sent Bill Vincent. I sent Tabitha Vincent. And they stepped on your toes and they told you the way it was. And you bucked against it. And you went to another church to get milk. And then you were satisfied with that milk for the rest of your life. So don't tell me that you're going to the pit of hell. Or you're barely getting into heaven by the skin of a chicken tooth. I'm telling you, there's something wrong with us when we always say, well, what about you? Well, what about this? I did this for this. I did that for this. Guess what? You do it for him or forget it. Aren't you, aren't you excited or aren't you saved is what I was going to say. Hmm. See, Paul said you're never ready for meat. Paul's a meat preacher. If you don't get that when you read about Paul, you don't read it. He's like, I'm, I'm giving you meat. It's coming up. It's not coming. I have to give you milk. Because you still haven't received. They are still babies. And they've been too long babies. See, there's babies that are supposed to be babies. But after a while, they need to get rid of the binky.
See, in the nation today, where the word of God is being preached, it's time to put an end to meetings when it's just giving bottles. If that's all we're going to get, then we need to stop doing it. Don't get me wrong. There's going to be new believers that are going to come in here and they're going to be wanting some milk and God's going to give them a little milk. But guess what? It's going to come it's stuffed inside of a T-bone steak. It's going to be stuffed inside of a sirloin. It's going to be right there in the midst of it. It's going to be marinated with some milk just to satisfy them a little bit. But it's going to be mostly given the depths of what God has. Why? Because we are about to advance quickly. What used to take a Christian 10 years is going to be happening in just a matter of months. Why? Because God says, I've got big plans. I want to have a revival to where people coming in in wheelchairs and blind eyes and deaf ears healed by the power of God. And we can't do it with a bunch of gloves of nipples hanging off the pole for all of us to have to feed on. How are we going to be able to feed on the nipples whenever there's nobody else that, that, that can get to one we're having to get to the nipples and nobody else is going to be able to get to one people are going to get saved be born again and need a little bit and guess what we're going to have to be able to stand and not be babies and i can already hear some of your th thoughts it's kind of like sometimes when you tell a child something to do and they always have a a, a, a response with a question. Yeah, I received this, but, you know, I think we, let me tell you, you can get your B-U-T and your B-U-U, your B-U-T-T out of the way if you need to. Butts have to go. Because you either receive it or you don't. That's what meat is. I don't care if I burn half the steak and I slap it on your plate, you got to eat it. Or you go hungry. Come on. Oh, we got to do this real quick. My aunt used to try to feed everybody whatever they liked. So she'd been over backwards. She cooked a meat for one person just the way they like it. Eggs for another person just the way they liked it. Pancakes for another just the way they liked it. And, and something else just the way they like it. But every day, this table would be flooded with all kinds of food. And it would just be pleasing to every person. Finally, one day, she said, it's time for somebody to grow up. It's time for somebody to get right and get standing before me. And stop just bickering about what you don't like. It's time for you. It doesn't matter if there's chocolate chips in the pancakes. It doesn't matter if you don't want French toast this morning. You're going to set your butt in the seat and you're going to receive as I give it to you. You say, oh, you shouldn't say butt in church. Well, then get your butt out of here. Because if if, 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 if anything, I got to pay a price for what I preach. I got to pay a price for what I release. And guess what? I, as far as me and my house, we're going to have revival. And it's not going to be a buffet for you to nitpick what you want. It's going to be a buffet of all the foods you don't like until you like what you don't like anymore. And then you'll want the other and receive the other. Come on. How many didn't like something when you were a child, but now you love it? Like broccoli. Man. Come on, when you were a child, you didn't want that stuff. You grow up, you start to like some of you still don't like it, but that's beside the point. That's not my point. That messed up my point, so don't talk to me. I'm talking about something else now. Come on, you change as you grow. Right now, you spit it up as a child, and then 20 years later, you're eating it left and right. Because you have matured. Some people's taste buds never mature. Isn't that right? Some people still want the ice cream and cookies only. Don't take that offensively. All right, we got to do this real quick. Christians 
can watch a three and a half hour movie and sit in front of that movie and watch that movie and watch it till it's watched. And then when that movie's over, they'll say, let's do another. But man, how they will just complain and murmur when the preacher goes longer than two hours. How much they might complain when a child says, oh, is it ever going to end? Some of you liked those early services where we got out at 830. But I want you to understand something. We can sit in front of a movie and watch it until we're blue in the face. We can sit at the theater. We can watch a ball game. But we can't be in the things of God for a matter of time. I still remember those prophetic words in, in Litchfield where God said we're going to have a service that's going to last seven hours, eight hours, where God's moving every minute of the hour. And he's going to touch, heal, set free, deliver. And there's going to be times that people are going to be so hit with the power of God, people are going to be flooding in continuously through the entire time. You say, oh, we can't do that. I don't know about you, but that's church, man. Mature Christians will want that kind of church. It's kind of like the church in the Philippines. Some of this is actually on the Finger of God video. But there's times that they'll pray, and they'll, and they'll have church, and they'll be preaching for a while. And then they'll just be like, can you come back? And they're like, yeah, we can come back tomorrow after you preached hours. And they're like, no, we don't want you to come back tomorrow. We want you to come back right now. We want to have some more church. And then they have some more church. And sometimes you can have 12-hour service with those in the Philippines. And sometimes they'll be sweating 110 degrees in, in the place with no air conditioning, hidden from everyone. But they'll just want the preaching of the word. They'll want what God has. They don't care how long it takes. They'll be on the dirt floor crying out to what God has. And they'll be upset if you stop. I tell you, here in America, we become spoiled babies who just don't care anymore. We just want to get home. We want to go to Denny's. We want to go to McDonald's. We don't want what God wants. If we really wanted what God wants, we wouldn't be in a hurry. Yeah. Really upsets me whenever people invite Nathan to a service and then tell him he only has till 10. It's like, are you for real, man? Did you watch it online before you invited him here? Nothing worse than a sermon that all it says is I don't have time. It's like, come on. Yeah, you do. I'll rob the place just for one night. <laughs> I'll shove the pastor in a closet and I'll tell everybody, and if anybody comes near me, I'll knock them out. Say, so that's against the law. But we'll have one heck of a service. The only way the pastor gets out of the closet is if he says, forgive me, Lord. Some of you think I'm joking, but I, hmm. I'd, I'd like to do it myself. It'd be worth going to jail for. Think about the headlines on that one. Yeah. Minister wanted a longer service, so he locked up the pastor. See, most sermons today is 45 minutes. The church complains about 45 minutes. I got people saved, and I'd bring them to a Brother Denny service, and his services was always four to five hours, every one of them. You know how ma much manifestation comes to a new believer that finds out that they thought was going to be an hour service it's going to be five hours, especially if they smoke and I won't let them. I mean, my goodness. By the end of the service, they lost their salvation. Just because of their manifestations. My biggest question tonight is this. Are you ready for the meat? 
or do you still need the milk? Welcome to the end of this informative podcast. We hope you found it enjoyable and enlightening. With over 100 books under his belt, Bill Vincent is a true master of the written word. His works are a treasure trove of knowledge and inspiration, available at all major bookstores and online platforms. So, don't miss out on the opportunity to expand your mind and be entertained. Pick up a book by Bill Vincent today.